morning and welcome to Revelation Revealed. We're excited you've taken the time to stop by today. And we're in chapter 15. This is week number 34, chapter 15 of the book of Revelation. We're going to be in the first four verses today of Revelation 15. The Bible says this in verse number one. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and then that had gotten victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, the Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. In the book of Revelation, there are three series of judgments that are listed. The seal judgments, chapters 4 and 5. The trumpet judgments, chapter 8 and 9. And now the vile judgments, chapter 15 and 16. The seal judgment takes place over years during the tribulation period and include the other two series of judgments. The trumpet judgments take place over months and include the bowl or vile judgments. The final vile judgments take place over weeks and happen in rapid and intense succession. Each of these series of judgments is more severe than the preceding one. Because of the time element involved, it seems that some of these judgments actually happen simultaneously with some of the other judgments. This set of vile judgments will be the final judgments that will take place before Jesus returns to finally end it all. For believers during the tribulation days, the conclusion of these judgments will be a great blessing and relief and deliverance will be theirs. For those unbelievers, though, this will be a terrible time. Those that have uh, taken the mark of the beast, things will only get worse. That's because Jesus will return and they will die and their eternity will be sealed in eternal damnation. The word vile actually means bowl or a broad shallow cup. It may be likened to the censers of Numbers chapter 16, which were used as fire pans that contained hot coals in them. They were considered holy, and their contents should be quickly or suddenly emptied. Once the last vial is poured out, the tribulation period or of seven vials will come to a conclusion. These final judgments of God upon the earth will be swift and more intense than any before. The long-suffering God will be long-suffering no more, and at long last he will pour out his wrath and vengeance upon the world. Chapter 15 is God's last action against the spiritual criminals that have destroyed the earth. His evidence against them will never be contradicted, for God knows everything about them, both inwardly and outwardly. His witness will never be intimidated, for they are under his divine protection. His officers cannot be bribed, for they are the holy angels of God. His penalty cannot be stayed by some legal technicality, for he sets the time of execution, and he has the ultimate power to carry it out. Chapter 15 is a, but a little picture of what de is detailed in chapter 17 about these vials. So let me start off today. That's kind of an introduction into our section but well, let me start off today with the prelude to the vile judgment. Now, preludes are musical introductions. They're what's played right at the beginning of a service that when our services are happening, our piano player plays for just a little bit. It's pre, it's before. So the prelude here uh, is what we find here. This is what happens here. The number seven is mentioned eight times in this chapter. It speaks of completeness and finality in this chapter. 
So the first thing you're going to notice is there's a sign in heaven. Look, if you would, at verse number one. I saw another sign in heaven. This another sign, which indicates that there were other signs that preceded this one. One was a woman clothed with the sun. She was found in, in Revelation chapter 12, verse number one. Another was the great red dragon, who is Satan in chapter 12, verse three. This is a sign that indicates we've come back to the timeline pictures and we're in sequence once again. Verse 1 tells us about this sign in heaven. It's great and marvelous. It's great and marvelous because of the terrible things that are about to happen. The words great and marvelous are nowhere else to be found together in the Bible except here in this chapter. These words describe the terribleness of God's wrath and the justice of God in his dealings with men. This justice comes only after God has sent his prophets, his preachers, his missionaries, his evangelists to tell the world about God's mercy and goodness, and yet mankind has still rejected God. The seven angels it mentions, <coughs> excuse me, the seven angels having the seven last plagues, these seven angels with the vials speak of the fullest measure of God's wrath upon the earth. The vials contain the wrath of God, which will be poured out upon the earth by these seven angels. Look at that. It says, for them it's filled up, no room left, total to the top. The wrath of God's getting ready to be poured out. I've heard it said this way, the undiluted wrath of God's getting ready to be poured out upon mankind during the vile judgments. You'll notice in verse 2, he says, And I saw, watch this, as it were, a sea of glass. You know, when you read that phrase there, the sea of glass, the as it were means that it's a picture. The sea was like glass, perhaps indicating the calmness and peace. But look at the sea of glass is mingled with fire. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. It's mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So it indicates the calmness and the peace. Now, who are these people? They're the martyrs that had in following Christ. It talks about their peace that's there. And so, however, this peace is mingled with fire, which speaks of the fiery trials of the martyrs and the saints of God went through. John points out that they were the people there that had gotten victory over the beast, his image, his mark, and over the number of his names, which means this during the tribulation, they were unwilling to bow before the beast or his image or to take his mark or his number and had victory over that. How'd they get victory, you say? How did they have victory over the beast? The beast killed them. The Antichrist is going to martyr all those who oppose his rule and reign. He, they're martyred, they're killed, and they're in heaven gathered around the throne of God. Notice chapter 13 of Revelation, verses 1 to 10, talks about this only as well. This group is one of three groups that are allowed to play in God's harp symphony, we could call it. Number one is those that were raptured into glory, Revelation chapter 5, verse number 8. The second group is the 144,000. We saw them in chapter 14 and verse number two. This third group is the tribulation martyr standing on the sea of glass here in chapter 15, verse two. What a great time of music. What a great time of music. This leads to a point, the next point in what they're singing. Notice, if you would, in verse number three. They sing a song of Moses, the servant of God. And the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. They have the harps of God, and they sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. So what are these two songs? The song of Moses, it pictures the joy that the people had when Moses brought them across the Red Sea. They saw great deliverance of God and the death of the Egyptians. Similarly, when the martyred saints see the deliverance that God provides them in that day, they too will experience the joy that brought a song in Moses' day. Incidentally, 
Some teach that this could include another song of Moses mentioned in Deuteronomy 32, verses 1 through 43, particularly verses 39 and 43. Perhaps these tribulation saints could be singing those words. In Revelation, these saints have been crying out to God in chapter 6, verse 10. How long? How long? Especially as it appeared that God was losing the battle on earth. Can you imagine being one of those tribulation saints? You're around the throne room of God and you're looking on earth and you're seeing the Antichrist power grow. You're seeing the beast and the false prophet and everything that's happening upon the earth. How it is getting worse and worse and it appears that God is losing. How long? But now, now there would be a victory. How sweet it is. It's a song of victory over death, sin, and the grave, all made possible by the shed blood of the Son of God. You know what's interesting is the first song recorded in the Bible, the first song recorded is the song of Moses in Exodus 15. And the last song of the Bible is also called the Song of Moses in chapter 15 of Revelation, verse number 3. Paul wrote in Romans 8.22, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So the Song of Moses. Secondly, it says that they're singing the Song of Moses, the Servant of God, and the Song of the Lamb. The Song of the Lamb, it's verses 3 and 4. There's a great message here on worship. Let's look at verse 3. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. His works, whoever you see, excuse me, whenever you see worship in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, it always encompasses a review of what God has done. This requires that we count our blessings from God and see what he's done, his works. And the song here they're singing is, Great and marvelous are thy works. They're singing praise to God because Jesus Christ is getting ready to judge the world. The end of these bold judgments will culminate with the return of Jesus Christ to the physical earth. You'll have the battle there, uh, the final battle there during the tribulation period, but then it will also go into the millennial kingdom and the final battle at the end. But we see here this song about his works. Notice about also his ways, verse 3. It says that his ways are just and true. Just and true. Sometimes we fail to understand that God's ways are best. They didn't always think that it seemed as if God was failing. Romans 11.33 says this, O oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. You see, to them at that moment, they've been singing, How long? How long? almost as if their hope was gone. But now on this day, they'll be singing, Just and true are thy ways, thy King of saints, praising the Lord for what he's done. You notice also his worth in verse 4. They recognize who God is, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name. We not only thank you for what you've done, but we worship you for who you are. And notice verse 4, all nations shall come and worship before thee. All nations shall come before thy judgments are made manifest. When we look at this text here, it gives us the prelude of what's about to happen in the next few chapters. The sign that they see in heaven, the marvelous and great judgment of God that's getting ready to fall upon the earth. The angels that are gathered there, the songs that they're singing. It culminates this. The end is near. Here in the next few chapters, we'll be looking at it more intently as the vile judgments play out, the return of Jesus Christ, the entering into the millennial kingdom, the final battle in the end, the new heaven and the new earth. It's getting better and better. 
So if we could say it this way, in this part of the tribulation period, we've gone through some of the trumpet judgments. We've gone through the seal judgments. Uh, we know that the last seal opens into the seven trumpets and the seven trumpets, the last trumpet opens into that, into the vile judgments. But we're at a point that it's getting ready to end. Satan's had a time that he's thinking he's won, but the victory's coming real soon. In the end, God wins. In the end. So just be reminded, you want some good news? Here's the good news. In the end, God wins. In the end, Jesus Christ will rule and reign. In the end, all those that have been saved by the blood of the Lamb will rejoice forevermore. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We look forward to the return of Christ. I want to thank you for stopping by and watching our video today as we dive into Revelation. I know sometimes they're heavy videos and we're trying our best to keep them as short as possible just to get all the information out. But I want you to keep tuning in, especially for the next few weeks to see what God has in store for this book of Revelation. We get, remind you, it's all about Jesus Christ. In chapter one, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ to men. And so I encourage you, keep watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that. That helps us out tremendously. I encourage you also to share this across the social media platform. If you're watching this video on YouTube, there's a share button right there. You hit that share button and you can share it straight to your Facebook, your Twitter page, uh, any of those formats, and that'll be a blessing for us to get it out there because God wants all people to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. And the rapture of the church is just around the corner. And any time God could send his son to rapture us out. And so I encourage you, be faithful. We hope to see you this week at our church here at Bible Baptist Church. We'll see you next time right here on Revelation Revealed.